take a stroll along the Centennial Parklands ponds here in the middle of Sydney and you're more than likely to see an eel. You might think it was born and bred here, perhaps we'll even die here, but you'd be wrong. Prepare to hear the amazing journey of the long fin eel. What a beauty! So this is our long fin eel. It's called a long fin eel because of this dorsal fin here. What do they eat? They will pretty much eat anything. Water invertebrates, crustaceans, small fish, ducklings. Ducklings? Yep. yep. You'll eat a duckling? Yep. They are at one of the top predators in the pond. The longfin eel is an Australian native species and it occurs in waterways all along the east coast from Queensland to Tasmania. I think um, people don't really like them. They find them quite creepy, quite slimy. But I've really begun to sort of fall in love with the eels here the more I find out about their story. An astonishing part of their story is that the eels, happily living in these ponds, will suddenly set off on a journey of a lifetime. Sexual maturity is one of the factors that triggers the migration. They feel the need to go and reproduce. The males are between about 8 to 12 years old. The females anywhere from about 10 to 30 years old before they begin their spawning migration. The first part of the journey is through the chain of ponds in the parklands through to the lowest lying corner. We have inlets and outlets for each pond, so that's how they would move from pond to pond. They can even go over land for short distances when there isn't a water connection. This is the final pond at the end of the chain, so this is where the water leaves the park and then basically moves along these stormwater channels and under the race course. Then they use the three golf courses, probably using some of the water courses there um, to then slowly make their way down towards the airport. So this is it? This is it, yeah, this is Mill Stream. This is where they come out into the bay. From fresh water into salt water for the first time? Yep, that's right. Those little sensors on their nose will pick up the change in the water and their gills will adapt to the more brackish water and then eventually to the salt water. But all sorts of other um, changes occur to adapt them to the environment. Their eyes enlarge and their eye pigments change so that they can see better in um, oceanic waters. Um, they build up fat reserves before they go. Their pectoral fins, the pin fins on the side of the body, get larger. Their gut totally degenerates because they don't feed and the anus constricts to restrict water loss from the body. So there's quite some uh, amazing changes that occur uh, as they make that migration. But getting to Botany Bay is just the first leg of the trip, and it's the easy part. The eels on this part of the coast, they actually head out to the southwestern Pacific. The exact area is still under some conjecture, but for many years it was thought it was south of New Caledonia or the um, Solomon Islands. It's very difficult to draw an X on the spot because mature adult eels have never been found in the spawning ground. To date, no one has fitted an eel with a tracking device to know for sure. We hone in on the spawning ground by looking at the size of the leptocephaly, the juvenile eels. Obviously, the smaller the little eel, the closer you are to where it was an egg, and thus where the spawning occurred. Each female eel produces millions of eggs, which develop into leptocephali, but not many survive. That's the strategy. You put lots out there and you hope a couple survive, maybe 1% at the most, I'd imagine. The next stage in the life cycle is what's known as a glass eel. The glass eels then begin their massive migration. They swim across from the spawning grounds back to the east coast of Australia and then follow the East Australian current down the coast and then into rivers. The juvenile eels come out of Botany Bay and swim back up this stream. The upstream migration is quite remarkable. Certainly in the Sydney region it's been well documented that they can actually negotiate Warragamba Dam, which is over 100 metres high. They make the return journey from the bay along the waterways, 
that eventually lead them back to these ponds. So every eel you'll see in Centennial Park has been part of this epic migration.